Two and a half years ago, Reserve Bank Governor Jill Marcus featured on Noseweek's cover as a wary mother hen sitting on a nest of eggs, all labelled Top Secret and clearly about to hatch. The caption read, Reserve Bank still hiding apartheid-era looting. There's not a chance in hell that she did not get to see it, not that she would have needed to. She'd been personally briefed on the subject by experts in the field several years before that. An extract from the story to refresh your memory. The ANC government was told in a secret report how apartheid-era government operatives stole hundreds of billions from the state and how vast sums could be recovered from those responsible and from the European bankers who'd helped them hide the loot. But mysteriously, the Mbeki cabinet and the Reserve Bank decided to do nothing about it. Why? The bank's own shareholders' reaction to attempts to gag them has brought to light an explosive intelligence report in which the Mbeki government was secretly given a detailed account of the extraordinary extent of frauds on the apartheid states perpetrated by the nationalist elite with the collaboration of the Reserve Bank, frauds that their ANC successors have until now chosen to cover up for reasons that still need to be explained. The document prepared by UK investigator CX casts a whole new light on Thabo Mbeki and Trevor Manuel's roles in setting up the 1999 arms deal as a major source of party funding. They had just been shown how, for more than a decade, their Afrikaner nationalist predecessors had done the same. Headed Operation on behalf of the South African government 1997 to 1999, the document revealed that CX was commissioned by the SA Security Service to investigate how public funds were stolen or otherwise misappropriated during the apartheid era with a view to recovering some pretty substantial sums of money, most of it still hidden abroad. Their report contains a strategic plan, Project Spear, designed to do just that. CX's first priority was to recover an illegal gift of three billion rand or so that ABSA Bank had secretly and illegally been given by the SA Reserve Bank. The reasons why Ms. Marcus, a past ABSA executive chairman, would rather not face questions about it are obvious. But what about the government? The ANC representatives about to gather at Mangaung? The voters? They would surely want it asked and answered. That thought brought Sylvia Vollenhoeven, a producer of programs for TV, to my door. She had read the Noseweek story, had prepared a rough TV script from it after talking to a few people in the know, and had sold the idea to an SABC2 producer who was embarking on a series of documentaries to be called Truth Be Told. Vollenhoeven had also learned that the public prosecutor had resumed an abandoned investigation into the matter, so the timing was perfect. I and others in the know were asked to participate. So too the governor and board members of the Reserve Bank. They refused in writing. On-camera interviews began. All was ready to fly by August and Project Spear was to be the launch program scheduled for 23 September at 9 p.m. But by then, word had reached the upper echelons of SATV, and panic had set in. One of the seniors suggested the program was a platform for bitter individuals to advance hidden personal agendas. Another observed, the government is not going to take kindly to being asked the question, why are you walking away from recovering so much money? Indeed, a long list of reasons for rejecting the film after the SABC had spent 280,000 rand on producing it, was compiled by Veronica Barnard, Compliance Officer, Broadcast Compliance Policy and Regulatory Affairs, SABC. Two are worth recording. The first, the program is indeed an unfair trial by the media, lacks what is fundamental to fairness, cross-examination, or at least questioning of the star government and SA Reserve Bank witnesses who declined to be interviewed. The defense of reasonableness within a democracy that values freedom of expression can therefore not be sustained. The second, the episode also indirectly promotes the print media Noseweek. This also goes against SABC policy. 
Half a dozen of the participants and the film crew gathered for a viewing on the 19th of October to see the final product and collect our Oscars. We clap and conclude that the SABC2 audience would have loved it and be left asking the same obvious question. Why has the government not acted? It happened to be National Media Freedom Day, which commemorates the day in 1997 when the World Newspaper and a range of organizations and publications were banned by the apartheid governments because they were raising too many questions. It is 2013, and what have we got? An SABC that is still the government's timid servant, and another government that believes it's entitled to act in secret to the detriment of its citizens.